G'day Celestube, Anna aka Moranalyst, back with another stitching update. It is June 13th, <coughs> a bit overcast, miserable winter day around here. Good for stitching. <coughs> Excuse me, clearly still cough. Um, welcome to anybody who's new, anybody returning. Um, love to hear from me in the comments, glad you could all stop by um, and join me for a little bit to chat about some stitching that we're all working on. Um, I, <coughs> after several um, weeks now of not filming mania vlogs, it <coughs> has felt a bit weird to um, basically have this big gap where I wasn't filming at all. And then now to get ready for filming today, it was um, actually... <coughs> quite a bit of organization to find all the projects, find all the stuff I'd acquired, um, and get it all ready for this. So, I don't know, I have to think about switching to a semi-vlog style. Um, it, filming during the week on a regular basis is hard, but I think, you know, maybe every two or three days type vlog? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I, um, I think to the floss tubers I watch, and very few of them actually do the vlog style. Um, so I guess that tells me I don't enjoy it, but I don't know whether the average does. So I don't know. Leave me your thoughts below. Um, there's definitely advantages and disadvantages both ways. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Today, <coughs> we have coughing. We also have a finish, a big finish, a whip of the century type finish, very exciting. Um, we have some progress and we have some haul. Um, so I'll leave the haul till the end. Let's start with the best bit, the finish. So now those of you who've been hanging around for a while will have seen this piece. I think I finished the cross stitch. A month or more ago? Oh, a month before Mania, put it that way. Um, it's too big for my board. It is, of course, the Teresa Wentzler. It is now all... The board is just not big enough for that. It is all backstitched. Uh, and beaded. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm going to insert a segment where you can see the upside, up detail, because this isn't doing it any justice whatsoever. Give me a second. So, hopefully, this will work a bit better to show you some of the details. It might actually have half a chance of focusing. Um, although, from the looks of my camera, I'm going to have to figure out how to flip this around, because I'm pretty sure you're looking at this upside down at the moment. But, you know, we'll come to that get to that when we come to it. So you can see, um, as per a lot of Teresa Wentzler's, you have a border of specialty stitches, um, Algerian eyelets, and I forget what she called, they're kind of a woven stitch in um, between. Teresa Wentzler's, I've found their specialty stitches are always very, very well documented, zero problems whatsoever. Um, actually making those stitches. Um, this, <coughs> you can see there's um, gold beads all throughout the border. Um, compared to something like the Chatelaine, there's nowhere near as many beads in this piece, but they are scattered all the way through the border. The, the bulk of them are the gold. There's a couple others in the Knights panel, which we'll look at when we get there. Um, the face is done over one. Um, this is the first one that I did where, you know, it's kind of over two and then it jumps to an over one section. And I find it a bit jarring. I'm not really convinced I like it. <laughs> like clearly... The, you're not going to get the details she has over two. There's just, you have to get it by going over one. But I find that change just a bit jarring. Um, but 
that's what she's got and so that's what I did. Um, all of these trees have putsy little bits of backstitch. You've probably got minimum, you know, a dozen, 18 different colors of backstitch in this piece. I'd have to actually look up the chart to find out what it is. Um, but none of it is marked on the chart in terms of color. It's descriptive. <laughs> so she'll say the maiden's hair and give whatever DMC number and the unicorn's uh, horn and mane and, you know, she'll list the items that get that color. Where it got a little bit confusing was, you know, you'd have these prominent trees at the front in one color backstitch, and then she'd say all other trees in the background, but then bushes over somewhere else. And because they're all various types of vegetation, I found it really easy to get confused as to what color of green I was meant to be using for any one tree. And even then, like I was stitching along in this big, tall, prominent tree, and I realized, oops, I'm highlighting one of the background trees or backstitching one of the background trees. I just went with it. There's not that much difference in the various greens you're backstitching. So I think as long as they get backstitched to give them some definition, you know, exactly which color you use is a bit secondary. But you better like stitching green if you want to do this piece, back stitching green. Um, yeah, look at all those trees. So every single one of these trees here is back stitched. Um, there's a couple in the background. There's a background one there. The two foreground trees are here. Um, there's some, it's not really back stitching. It's half stitches over the top of your uh, regular cross stitches in the water. And you can see it in person if you're up close. It gives it sort of a bit of a reflection look, which I'm sure is what she was going for. It's not super obvious, um, but it is there. Um, I do really like the way the hills and stuff come up when you get the back stitching. And of course, acres of back stitching and all that roof and castle bits and whatnot. But, you know, a piece like this, it really needs the back stitch to define where that tower ends and this one starts. Um, again, you can see just the beading little bits. As far as the Teresa Wensler border goes, this is relatively uh, inornate. I, you know, I did the um, Storyteller um, a couple years ago, and uh, that border is substantially more involved just in the number of colors and how thick and heavy it is. You can always tell a Teresa Wensler chart by its thick, heavy borders edging her work. So this night's panel, again, face is done over one um, to get that extra bits of detail. You see we same beads and same specialty stitches mirroring. Um, so one thing I did change, the pattern called for these larger gold mill hills, which are 557. I think they're just about everybody will know those. They're in lots of charts. And then down here in his sword, they called for the petite version thereof. However, when I was finishing this piece, I was sitting on virtual stitchers and I couldn't find this packet and my delicas were close by. So I went and I grabbed some blue delicas that match the um, horses who, uh, oh, what do you call that blanket over them? And his armor on his head and put those in his sword instead so just as something to make it a little bit of my own and then of course I promptly found the packet of beads that was meant to go in there but too late at that point not gonna rip them out for the heck of it um yeah again heaps of back stitching in the green to get a bit of tree uh no that was all in there there isn't any back stitching in those trees. Oh, it's in the maids panel that has back stitching in the trees. We just have it on the bushes down here. 
um, but quite a bit in the horse in various colors. So that uh, I think is about all I can tell you for the Fantasy Triptych by Teresa Wensler. Um, the fabric is an even weave that is so old I wouldn't have a clue. I'm gonna guess it's um, 28 count um, just because the squares look about the right size but I mean that's purely a guess guys. So I think that's it for the Teresa Wensler. See you back in the main video. So hopefully that up close segment worked a bit better and you can see the detail in the stitching and the beading. Um, there's acres of blends in this thing and acres of backstitch. So if you're not a fan of either one of those, you're probably not a fan of Teresa Wensler's. Um, this represents my uh, oldest whip, I believe. So I reckon, best as I can remember, I probably started this about 98. I'm pretty sure I started it before I came to Australia the very first time, you know, before I met my husband, clearly before there were any kids around. Um, I vaguely remember being in my childhood bedroom starting this. Uh, so this has been hanging around for a long time. And obviously, as a teenager, I loved reading the fantasy books, you know, and so this was right up my alley. Now that I have this mammoth project all finished, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it because I kind of feel like I've outgrown that a little bit. Um, but still, you know, it, I definitely put it up on the walls of the she shed and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, if you had told me when I started it that, you know, it was going to take me almost 20 years to finish, well, more than 20 years to finish it, I... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would have started it or not. Probably I would have. Um, it is gorgeous. Definitely gorgeous. So I do need to put my initials on there yet, but I will do that <coughs> um, quick after I uh, film this because I'm getting ready to put all of the stuff from that project bag away <coughs> and move it back into the main stash. So massive accomplishment. You know what I didn't prep when I was getting ready for this? It was all the stitch from stash and uh, other statistics for May. I might have to <coughs> insert a segment for that after I do the math. I guarantee it won't be pretty. That'll just be a spoiler. So, <coughs> after I finished the Wensler, I uh, decided that... Uh, you know, after having done the mandalas for a month and then the monster Wensler to get that finished, I thought I just need something where I don't have to think so hard for a while. And besides, it was midweek and during the work week, just no time or no brain cells spare for anything else. So we pulled out the Aura of Autumn, which you guys did see a couple of times. Let me pull the picture of what it looks like. Remind you, we're working on the park bench. There's three panels all together. Um, you can just start to see the park bench coming together in this. Uh, <coughs> I think a couple of times when you saw it during Mania, when I was just using it as some filler, easier stitching, I might have been over here in the blue column. Um, I've moved over where there's significantly more confetti and the process progress has slowed substantially. Um, I'm very, very close to a page finish though. This line here indicates the end of the page. So I will attempt to finish that page before the end of June so I can at least get a little bit of stitch from stash credit that ain't going to really do anything to fix the budgetary issues. But, you know, it's all good. Um, yeah, so this is a very good piece for not having to think too hard, essentially. Just needle up, needle down, 
move to the next spot. Needle up, needle down. Um, so it's it's often the one I'll pull out really late at night when I'm just tired and or can't be bothered to think really is what it comes down to. So it's nice to see that progress coming along. I'm kind of hopeful once things settle a little bit more, I might be able to get a large enough piece of even weave to start that mapping full coverage and then I'll be able to cycle between this one and the mapping one for a bit of a thematic break in uh, full coverage projects. Um, need to uh, have a go at making myself some new grime guards because um, this one's getting pretty filthy and I don't have another one to put on my project if I put this one in the wash. So, you know, I bought some uh, elastic the other day and that's as far as I've gotten on that project. But I have acres of spare fabric so I should be able to whip something up. Surely it can't be that hard, right? Um, so that was Aura of Autumn. Oh, I forgot to tell you, that was Leonid Afromov. The chart is by Artisi. This is stitched on an even weave. No idea what count. Yeah, I'm not even going to hazard guess. No idea. It's just, it just was a cheap even weave. Um, <coughs> so the last thing then that I stitched on was the Celtic Summer by Lavender and Lace. And that's what she's meant to look like. I always reckon they looked like really springy colors. So those of you who don't remember, I'm doing a tropical sunset um, summer conversion. So I have the dark oranges and the blues from the ocean as well as um, when I was initially figuring out what colors I wanted to do my thought was you know tropical sunset so you got the orange sunset colors the darker the water in the ocean and then the dark green palm tree silhouettes and the picture I chose my colors off of only had the blue and the orange and I thought I was giving up those dark palm tree silhouettes, but it turns out the greens in the medallions and then the vegetation in their back skit are actually pretty stinking good representatives of that silhouette of the palm trees too. So we've got both. Um, yeah, so I've only worked on this today, so there isn't a heap of progress. I started doing more work in the medallions essentially because those medallions are so putsy. I didn't want to do all the stitching in everywhere else and then be stuck with only medallions to do. So I'm trying to break it up. I'll do an easy thread in her dress and then I'll go back and do some putsy in the medallion and then come back and do some dress in the medallion. So today I've been largely working on the swirls in the dress. Oh, the storage bows. What were you up to? Um, so yeah, I, I can't remember what I was talking about. Um, not a heap of progress on this, but I'm going to keep this out, um, I think for the bulk of the week to continue to work on. Um, I am hopeful that the metallics that go through her dress and stuff will arrive at some point this week. And so I will get a chance to fill in some of that and make sure I haven't missed random bits of blue stitches and whatnot. So I love the way this color scheme is coming out. Um, I quite like the way the medallions are looking. It'll be awesome once we can get all the beads and the metallic and stuff in there as well, I think. Um, this is a 28 count cashel linen, um, which is pretty much my go-to anytime you've got beads involved. Um, it is just dyed with a writ dye. Um, yeah, I can't remember which dyes I actually used anymore. It's uh, got a light color and then a darker one over the top. Um, it's showing up pretty true to what I had hoped to get in the camera. Um, I think in person there's a fair bit more of a red tone to the fabric. Um, I'd be 
absolutely stoked if I could get something that was a bit more neutral like what's in the camera. But you get what you get and you don't throw a fit with dyeing. So I like it. That is that. Um, yeah, just looking at it now that I pull it away, it's, it's much darker um, and redder in person. So that is everything I've worked on. Um, the plan for the upcoming couple of weeks is to work on the Celtic summer or of autumn will probably almost always just sit by my bed at a night and get a few stitches here and there. Hopefully a page finished before the end of the month. Um, and then I'll probably just spin the wheel and see what the wheel says. That's what I did the last couple of times. The wheel told me I was going to work on triptych and then the wheel pick, picked Celtic summer. So we'll just spin the wheel and work on that for a week and that'll do. So as far as stash, um, actually before I do stash, I'm going to insert the segment I'm going to film in a few minutes with the stats for um, May for the stitch from stash. So see you in a second. Okay, so I've gone and looked up my uh, stats for the month of May. We just finished. Um, so stitch from stash, <coughs> excuse me, I started with a negative $11.66 balance. Uh, dollars balanced reminder that all these are AUD and I've applied a conversion across the board um, I think I forgot to look it up I think my budget's 35 a month so between the budget and I had a credit of $124.44 for the Japanese moss garden finish um, that did have 10% each for the beads, the specialty stitches. Um, it was about four, or claimed about 0.4 extra for that one. <coughs> and I didn't look up those notes. Uh, <coughs> anyway, so a total of $124.44. So that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But then you look at the expenses that um, <coughs> for kidding up, it was predominantly to do with kidding up the two additional, uh, the Tahiti and the Hawaiian mandalas, um, plus a few other bits and pieces in there. And it came to a whopping $351.55 of expenses. So that tanks my uh, end of the month uh, puts me at negative $238.70. Hence the reason I am scrounging for every last $5 page finish <coughs> for Aura of Autumn, just to try and climb out of the hole a little bit. <coughs> so it is what it is. Um, I didn't do so well last time I did stitch from stash, so we, I don't know whether I'll do it again in July or not, but you know, clearly I don't do very good at keeping to a budget. <laughs> um, as far as what I worked on during the month of May, <coughs> we all know it was largely the mandalas. There was the one day. Um, I finished the Japanese Moss Garden on May 1st to kick off Mania. Um, so that's the only day it had. I had five days on the Aura of Autumn in amongst the uh, mandala stitching. And then the bulk of my time was 16 days on Tinctorium and 17 days on Hawaiian mandalas. So not bad <coughs> for a month of stitching. Um, for those of you who count your stitches, I don't do that. Counting days is as good as it gets. Um, so yeah, back to the main video. Okay, this video is gonna require some editing with all this segment business going back and forth. So in during Mania, you may have remembered I was having issues getting some of the threads um, for the various uh, mandalas I was working on. So I got an order from these guys, the Cruel Goblin, not, yeah, I don't know if that's how you say it or not. Anyway, um, so they were great. They um, 
you know, put up with my 50 emails. Do you have this? Do you have that? You know, and, and they were able to get what I was after, which in this case was all the, a bunch of specialty Gloriana's, not the regular stranded silk. I've got Floramel, I've got um, Princess Pearl, got Luminescence, you know, the weirder Gloriana stuff. So when I was doing Tinctorium, so I'll just pull this as a fabric Tinctorium's on. Um, I had one of these, and honestly, I can't remember which one. There's a bit more difference in the camera. Um, and it's meant to go around, fill in a bunch of the background around these animals. Um, it, it basically fills out the, a lot of that bar that's left there. And I wasn't convinced that the one scheme that I had ordered will be sufficient. So I ordered a second one just in case. And it's probably a good thing I did because like they're not far off, but they're decidedly two different dye lots. One is got a greener hue and one's a bit bluer. Not bad. You know, the world probably wouldn't be ending. But I think what I'll do is I'll basically stitch one strand or one not strand one thread one needle full from one lot and then one needle full from the other lot and alternate them and I think between the variation that's within the colors you won't really notice the variation in the emphasis um, between the bluer and the greener of the two schemes that's the plan anyway <coughs> And that should be more than enough to do the Tinctorium project. The other one I was missing, and I think this is the last one I'm missing for Tinctorium, was, well, aside from if anybody remembers that whole kerfuffle with the, I think those were Dinky Dyes pearls, which we haven't seen the last of those yet. Um, <coughs> this was a Luminescence in the color Forest. So I don't even know where that fits in <coughs> to the project yet, but it was on my list to get and they had it, so I got it because I didn't want to be waiting on it when it came. Um, <coughs> I think in the Japanese moss garden, it called for this same luminescence as well in one of the specialty stitches and I just used the regular Gloriana stranded silk Looking at this, I'm not convinced. I mean, we'll make a final decision after we stitch with it, but honestly, I think you'd be just as happy with the stranded silk in wherever this was called for. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see once we get to it and once we have a play with it, what we think. But I can't say as I'm sold just on the visuals. So there was those two, and then the other ones that came were all for the Tahiti Mandala, which hasn't been started yet, although again, I'm hopeful that chart might show soon. Um, so these are a bunch of floor metals <coughs> for the Tahiti Mandala, and then this one also had a Princess Pearl, which this one blends in a little bit. Hopefully it's not too close to the outside picture, but I love the way those colors sit on this fabric. Um, this one, the Princess Pearl, is decidedly shinier than the Luminescence. So, I don't know, they both are still, at least that's what they say, I don't know really what the difference is, but that one is clearly, like the dinky dye um, pearl threads, this has <coughs> a fair bit of <coughs> sheen to it. Um, so yeah, all that came from the cruel, that's not the one, that's the one, <coughs> the cruel goblin. Um, they, <coughs> I think, don't generally have those specialty Glorianas in stock, 
but they were able to source them from their Australian wholesaler, which meant I could get them in my hot little hands here in uh, North Queensland. So that was good. Um, yeah, if anybody's looking for stuff, I checked them out. They were very helpful. Um, other than that, I bought just off the local stash unload um, Facebook group. Somebody had this kit floating around. And I thought, oh, I can't go past that kit. I uh, saw a friend stitching this one years ago and I've kind of been half keeping my eye out for it. So, yeah, wasn't uh, the cheapest stash unload uh, pickup, but uh, figured I'm not letting that one go past because, you know, it's, it's the one you'll always kind of regret if you didn't get it. So, jump straight on that one. And that was excellent. So, but I think this will just go in the general stash bucket and I don't <coughs> think I'll start this one anytime soon. So the big question left unanswered after all of that is now that I have finished my massive 20 year whip, just in case you forgot what it looked like, um, this was the whip that I had that I had pulled out of all my projects from before I gave up stitching for a lot of years. Um, so I figured now that I've finished this one, I will pull out another project um, and work to get that one finished. I showed you the stocking that I pulled out a couple of videos ago. Uh, <coughs> maybe I should do that one. Maybe I should spin the wheel. I don't know. There are several in that stash that I think I could finish relatively quickly. It would be good to get <coughs> a couple of them out of the to-do bucket. But stay tuned. Maybe we'll find out next week <coughs> what I've replaced it with. Um, until then, I hope everybody's having a good stitchy life. Um, enjoying what you're working on. Keeping safe. Wash your hands. Stay home with Ken. All that jazz. It's easier to stitch when you're at home, so you might as well stay home and stitch. Um, I will catch you all in a couple of weeks. See ya.